gospels and turn there if you would please thank you miss Shalina, for that song i'm glad i serve a great savior amen i'm glad i serve a great savior and what a blessing it is to know jesus christ and uh, john newton how I many you know who john newton is he wrote amazing grace and uh he's coming down to the end of his life and his memory was fading and uh, they questioned him one day they said mr. Newton can you remember anything is there anything that you remember mr. Newton was hardly able to talk and he said my memory is nearly gone but I remember two things that I am a great sinner and Jesus is a great Savior what a blessing amen I hope and pray today that when you leave here, you know Jesus Christ as Savior. If you're here this morning and you're lost without Jesus, I'm so glad you're here. And God is too. He says that today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. If you're here this morning and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior, the goal of this message is for you to see the need of your Savior. You come to Him. And today you'll be changed. You'll be different because you know Him as Savior. Matthew chapter number 5, stand with me if you would please. We're going to read one verse. We've been preaching on the topic of the blessed life, living the blessed life. And uh, we come today to verse number 7 of Matthew chapter number 5, where the Bible says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Let's read that together out loud, please. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Finding mercy with Jesus. Lord, we love you today. Thank you that you care for us. Thank you that you've truly healed us. You've changed our life for not just a moment, but for eternity. And Lord, for those that know you as Savior, not only can their life be blessed, but God, their eternity will be blessed. And Lord, this morning there are those that may be here that do not know you as Savior. God, I pray today that their life would be changed before it's too late. I pray, God, that you would intervene this morning that your Holy Spirit would work in a special way that God your people will know that you've been in, in among us today may you change us in Jesus name amen thank you may be seated when we think about the Beatitudes and we think about the idea of this Sermon on the Mount and Jesus preaching probably the greatest message or the greatest message that's ever been preached he begins the sermon with an introduction on the blessed life. He says, if you're going to be blessed, then here's what has to take place. I've said every service probably that we've opened on Sunday morning over the last several weeks that every one of us desire a blessed life. Every one of us want the Lord to bless our life. I don't know anyone that wakes up and says, Lord, I just want a terrible day. I want this day to be terrible. I want it, just, I want it to stink. I don't know anyone that wakes up and says that. I've never had a day, though, where you woke up and you thought somebody prayed that for you. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. You think, man, my husband must have prayed something seriously wrong for me today because huh? it's just one of those days. We all have those days in our life. We all have those moments in our life. But God says here, if you want a blessed life, he says you have to understand there's some things that you must possess. He says in verse number 3, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Verse number 4, blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted and we dealt with the idea that not only do we mourn when we lose a loved one or we lose someone close to us but God's people are to mourn over the condition of a lost and dying world blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted verse number five blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth we have to get rid of pride we have to get rid of self we have to get rid of a selfish attitude before we ever can see what God desires to do through us. And then we come to verse number 6. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Many of us have filled our life with things that do not honor the Lord. Therefore, we are left wanting. We're desiring something more. We're longing for something more. We're looking for something more. But the truth of the matter is this, friend. You cannot be filled apart from Jesus Christ. You will not find contentment and you will not find peace and you will not find joy and you will not find blessing unless God is part of the equation. And then we get to verse number 7 here where the Bible tells us blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. A mother once sought from Napoleon the pardon of her son. The emperor said, Is the man's second offense and justice demands death? 
The mother says, I do not ask for justice. I plead for mercy. The emperor said, but he does not deserve mercy. And the mother replied, it would not be mercy if he deserved it. Many times in our life, we believe that we can satisfy or that we can overcome or that we can deal with the issues of our life apart from Jesus Christ. Many of us think that we've arrived to where we are today because of who we are. We've gotten to the place in our life because of what our name is or maybe because we've come to church and those kinds of things or maybe because we're a good person. We've arrived at what we would call a blessed life because sometimes we feel as if we deserve it. Understand something very quickly. Grace is getting what we don't deserve. That's heaven. Grace is getting what we don't deserve. That's heaven. But mercy is not getting what we do deserve, and that is hell, friend. You and I deserve nothing this morning except hell. You and I deserve nothing this morning except separation from God in our own might, in our own ability, in our own, in our own power, friend. We possess nothing that can obtain eternity with Jesus Christ. But because of the mercy of God, a difference has been made. Because of the mercy of Jesus Christ, you and I don't have to endure hell this morning. Because of the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ, there's an opportunity for those who do not know Jesus Christ to come to Him and receive eternal life. But friend, it is not something that we deserve. It is not something that we should be given. It is simply the grace of God that provides that mercy for you and for me. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The mercy that you and I enjoy, the mercy that we receive on a daily basis is not something that we deserve, friend. It is the grace of God that gives it to us. I'm so thankful for God's grace. I say often that many times the things, the mercy of the Lord in our life is, takes place or we enjoy God's mercy. And the way we enjoy it is through things we never know were even present. Things in our life that God kept us from. Decisions in our life that we could have made, but God led us in a different direction. The Bible tells us that it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. Let me think, of, think about this with me this morning, friend. The very life that you live, the life that you enjoy, and you think about all that that entails. Your children, your family, the world that you believe that you've created is all held in the palm of the Lord's hand. And the Bible says that it's of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. The Bible also teaches us in Psalms that the mercies of the Lord are new every day. Aren't you thankful that God doesn't keep tallies of our failures? That God doesn't keep tallies of our faults? That God doesn't sit in heaven and try to balance the equation, if you will? The Bible says that the Lord's mercies are new every day. Brother Billy, I'm so thankful that when I need the Lord, he's present. I'm so thankful that when I need God, listen, I don't have to go send out a search party. I don't have to go try to find him. The Bible says that the God that I serve not only hears but answers my prayer. He's present in all times. The God that I serve is everywhere, friend. The Bible says in the, in the book of 2 Kings, that Elijah stood there with the prophets of the grove and the prophets of Baal. And they said, call on Baal. Maybe he's sleeping. Maybe he's taking a vac vacation. Maybe he's busy doing something else. Hey, friend, I don't have to worry about my God being on vacation. I don't have to worry about my God being busy. I don't have to worry about my God being so consumed with something else that he can't hear me. The Bible says he's with me always, even unto the end of the world. That's the mercies of the Lord that God is present. God knows where we are. God knows what you're dealing with. And this morning, you may be in this building, and you may be broken. There are broken people all across this world today. Many times they're broken, and they don't believe that no one else cares. I would say to you this morning, if you're here and you're broken, God cares. God knows exactly where you are. He wants to take that hurt that you're carrying, and he wants to heal it. You may be here this morning and you may be bitter. Your attitude may be, well, Pastor, you don't know what I've been through or what I've done or what I'm experiencing. 
And that's the truth. Maybe I don't. But more importantly than me knowing, God already knows. And that bitterness, God wants to remove it. He wants you to be consumed with more than just a bad attitude or a bad spirit or, or, or a bad hand that you've been dealt. He wants you to be consumed with a joy that only He can provide. You may be broken. You may be bitter. You may be here this morning and you say, Pastor Brian, I'm in a bad place. You've come to the right place this morning because Christ desires to change your life. Why? Because of mercy. Think about it this morning, friend. Where would we be without the mercy of God? We said just a moment ago, you heard me, grace is getting what we don't deserve. You and I get heaven and we don't deserve it. If you know Jesus Christ as Savior, if you've asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart to forgive your sin and to be your Savior, and you get heaven, friend, but we don't deserve it. That's grace. But mercy is not getting what we do deserve. Think about it in our life. How many times have we had the thought, well, they're getting what they deserve? Aren't you glad that God doesn't give us what we deserve? Aren't you glad that God doesn't look at us with a, a pious, pompous, prideful spirit and say, you're going to get what you deserve? Then why is that so present in our life? It's of the Lord's mercies that we're all not consumed. You and I, the Bible says, if we're going to be blessed, we're going to have to be merciful. You know, that goes against our grain, doesn't it? Our nature is this, Brother Kenny. When someone does us wrong, we're going to get them back. I remember, uh, I've shared with you stories about times when I was a youth director. And um, my family, my wife's family especially, they, they all know that if you mess with me, I, I may not get you back right away. But I promise you, I will get you back. And it will be far greater than what you delivered to me. I do that jokingly, but isn't, that, isn't, it, isn't it amazing how prevalent that is in, in Christianity today? We want to lift ourselves up not by honoring the Lord, but by tearing down someone else. You see, when we tear down other people, we haven't lifted ourselves up. We've just lowered the playing field. The Bible says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. I want to give you three reasons this morning very quickly on why God's people should be merciful. On why God's people should be merciful. Number one, we should be moved to be merciful because of the need of mercy in our own life. We should be moved to be merciful because of the need for mercy in our own life. I said just a moment ago, you did not arrive where you are because of who you are. You did not get to the place where you are because you deserved it. It was the Lord's mercy. When we look and we see a lost and dying world in the condition they're in, we had just this past week, people call the church often, asking for help and asking to, 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 for help with certain things. And, and we try to be a blessing when we can. We, 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 we're not able to help everyone, but we try to help people when we can. And I'll be honest with you, I have a very soft heart. I want to help everybody. I have a very soft heart when I see families who come and have a need and they have children. It's not those kids' fault. They're, not, they're in that situation. They're dealing with that. I have a very soft heart. Some people that come, they, when they show up two or three times a week, I, my heart kind of hardens a little bit. But it's only the Lord's mercy that it's not me. It's only the Lord's mercy that I'm not there. It's only the Lord's mercy that I'm not in that physical state or that physical condition. And while we may look at the world and we may say, oh, look how terrible it is, many of you and many, uh, uh, you and I often lie and find ourselves... Um, in a position not physically but spiritually in that same condition we're lacking we struggle it's amazing to me how when a Christian falls or a Christian fails a Christian makes a mistake in the name of prayer we want to let everybody know 
Do you notice how when a preacher falls, it's magnified? A preacher or a pastor or a spiritual leader or someone who's a Christian can make a mistake, and the first thing we want to do is to let everybody know about it. Go ahead. There will come a day when you'll need mercy. And it's amazing how quickly that what we once thought was right was judgment when it applies to us now becomes mercy. When it's someone else, we pray for judgment. But when it's us, we pray for mercy. The Bible says, blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. God says, listen to me, you want to know why you need to be merciful? Because there will come a time in your life when you'll need mercy. There'll come a time in your life when you'll need someone to bend down where you are and to pick you up. You'll need someone to lean over and pray with you, to put their arm around you. And when you feel as if no one else cares, you'll understand and know because you've been merciful that there is a God that cares. There's a God that loves you. There's a God that's concerned about where you are. But friend, that'll never take place until you learn to be merciful. Be merciful with our church family. Can I say something to you? I know that this, it's an election year. And we live in a world that is doing everything they can to push God away. But church, it should not embolden us. It should break our hearts. Because the reason they're in that condition is because they don't understand the Lord's mercy. It ought to, it ought to stir us to do more to reach the lost. It ought to stir us to do more to, to reach out to a lost and dying world. It ought to stir us to say, I want to reach that individual for Jesus Christ. We hear people talk about things that we disagree with, and it doesn't take much, to be honest with you. How many of you, how many of you talk to your TV when the news is on? How many of you know what I'm talking about? Man, they come across there and they'll give you some wacko job here, and you're like, what in the world? Are, are you crazy? I do that. My wife doesn't allow me to watch the news anymore. She put me on news restriction. And uh, she didn't allow me to watch the news. But it's amazing. You know, we, we'll, we'll see somebody come across. And, and I'll be honest with you. There's some weird cats out there, man. Listen, if, if you believe what some of these guys believe, you've been dropped too many times. Amen? I'm just telling you. But they'll come on, man, and they'll start talking about all they want. And the first thing we want to do is give them our peace of mind. But the first thing we ought to do is say, Lord, I know why they think that way. They don't know you. They don't know you like I know you. They don't know about your mercy. Say, so what mercy you're talking about? I want to give you, number one, I want you to see God's mercy in our life. I want you to see, number one, our description. What is the Bible? How did the Bible describe us when we were, when we were without Jesus Christ? The Bible says that we were dead. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, we were dead and our trespasses and sin. Our description, God says we were dead. Listen, I don't know about you, but I, I don't like the idea of being merciful to something that's dead. It's gone. There's nothing I can do to help it. Nothing I can do. The Bible says, but God was merciful to us when we were dead. Not only that, we see our des description, we see our direction. Where were we at? We were lost. How many of you have ever been lost? How many remember when you were little? How many remember when you were little that you ever got lost in a store? If you, if you remember, honestly, some of you young boys, they're still lost today, amen? If you'll remember, honestly, there's a fear and a terror that comes with being lost, genuinely lost. The Bible says we were lost, and Christ was merciful to us. The Bible says we were dead, and Christ was merciful to us. The Bible says we wandered about in Matthew as a sheep having no shepherd. Christ was merciful to us. Our destination was hell. And Christ was merciful to us. You think about the description in our life. You think about those three things. Our, our description. You think about our destination. You, you think about our, our direction. There was nothing present. There was nothing in our life that God looked at and said, listen, that's an attribute. That's something that I, I, I think we could work with. God looked at us and saw nothing. But he was merciful. Look what the Bible says. Take your Bibles and turn with me, if you would please, to the book of Matthew, chapter number 25. Just 20 chapters to the right. Matthew, chapter number 25, this morning.
Matthew chapter number 25. Look down with me, if you would, please, in verse number 34. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. The condition of our life was nothing that it was positive to the Lord. But because of His mercy, because of God's mercy, we obtained mercy. We're to be merciful because one day we'll need mercy. Number two, not only would it be merciful because one day we'll need mercy, we're to be merciful, number two, because being merciful honors Christ. Being merciful honors Christ. The word Christian means like Christ or little Christ. And in being like Christ, we are to honor the Lord. Uh, and being like Christ, we're to be merciful. Look, number, look at verse number 37 of Matthew 25. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee that in hunger and fed thee and thirst and gave thee drink and when saw thee a stranger and took him in naked and clothed thee or when saw thee sick in prison and came unto thee the Bible says Lord we've never seen you naked and, and thirsty and hungry and gave you drink and thirsty and, and gave you drink and hungry and gave you food and we've never given you clothes Lord how, how in the world can you tell us this look what he says in verse number 39 or verse 40 and the king shall answer and say to them verily I say unto you insomuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren ye have done it unto me we're to be merciful number two because it honors God everything we do as a believer we should do for the purpose of honoring Christ first Corinthians 10 31 whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do do all to the glory of God we're to honor the Lord Jesus Christ we are unable get this we are unable to show true mercy until we have first experienced true mercy you'll never be able to share the mercy of God until you have first experienced it yourself you see you and I are never going to be able to lead a lost and dying world to Jesus Christ until we first know him as Savior we're never going to tell them or be able to tell them about the power of a relationship with God or, or the blessing of a personal relationship with God until we have first arrived at that destination ourselves, friend. So many times the reason a lost and dying world doesn't come to Christ and a reason that people that live outside of our doors and our neighborhoods, our friends and our families never come to Jesus Christ is because there are many Christians who are powerless, who haven't experienced what God can do, who, haven't, who do not have that personal relationship that God desires them to have and they walk inst amongst the lost and dying with no power in their life we're to honor God with mercy but friend we can't share it until we first experienced it we have to come to the end of ourself we have to empty ourself of pride and selfishness and arrogancy and humble ourselves before God. A true representation of God's mercy is not man-made, it is Christ-centered. As a believer, when we offer mercy, it should, never, it should never be returned and reflected upon us. It should be reflected to Christ. I'm only merciful, Brother Jim, because Christ has been merciful to me. It's not me that provides mercy. It's not me that creates mercy. Brother Elmer, it's Christ in our life that helps us to understand what true mercy is. When we're merciful, we honor God. He says when, when you do it to those men, women, boys, and girls that you see every day, he says you've done it unto me. It's amazing how easily we would be merciful if Christ was standing next to us. When we understand that Christ knows about us what no one else knows about us, it's easy for us to be merciful to someone who's struggling. 
If Christ were standing right here this morning and there was someone that we were dealing with that had a problem with lying, it would, easy for us to be, it would be easy for us to be merciful about their lying with Christ standing next to us. If Christ was standing next to us and there was a problem with our thought life, it would be easy for us to be merciful about the thought life knowing that Christ knows about our thought life what he knows about it. You, you get the picture? We need to be merciful because it honors Christ. Why? Because we reflect what Christ did for us. Number three, not only number one, should we be merciful because we're in need of God's mercy. Number two, we need to be merciful because it honors Christ. But number three, we should be merciful. Look in verse number seven of Matthew number, uh, chapter five, verse number seven. We should be merciful, number three, blessed are the merciful. Why? for they shall obtain mercy. We should be merciful in our life because we desire the blessing of God. Remember when you were growing up? My, my kids are growing up. One will be a junior. She'll be a junior tomorrow. She's still not a junior. One's in eighth grade, one's in seventh, and one's in fifth. You remember the first time you saw your children when they were growing up do something kind for someone? Remember when they maybe, your, your little boys held those doors for an older lady that was walking in the building? When the, when the young men held the doors for the young ladies that were walking in the building? I mean, back when the young men used to hold the doors for the young ladies when they were walking in the building. You know, some of you guys need to take a How to Get a Girlfriend class. <laughs> or you're going to be struggling for a while. Anyway, back to the other message. Remember seeing those little boys do something kind that made you proud? And inside you're going, man, that's my son, man. You know, you had to, on the inside, you know, on the outside you're like, yeah, I told him that. On the inside, you're like, I can't believe he did that. <laughs> you're proud. And they didn't want to just make you come to that little boy and go, man, I'm so, I'm so proud. You want to give him a hug? Man, they could have got anything they wanted from you right then because they had, they had honored you. The Bible says blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Brother Ronnie, I, I want to be the kind of Christian that makes God proud. I want to be the kind of Christian that, listen, I may not have it figured out all the time. By the way, there are none of us that have it figured out all the time. All of us are still working on it. There are times in my life I feel like I'm, I, I, I'm wondering if I'm on the right planet. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Man, am I, even, am I, am I where I'm supposed to be here? We're trying to figure it out. But I want to be the kind of Christian that God looks down on and says, you know what, you may not even understand what you just did. But I love what I'm seeing in your life. Amen. We talked about those that were broken, those were, that were bitter, those were in a bad place. He said, how do I get out of it? How do I get back to the place that I know I'm supposed to be? You know how, I, you, listen, you don't jump, you don't jump from one, one spot to the next spiritually. You take it one step at a time. You grow in the Lord. You let God begin to work in your life. You let God begin to change. He says, blessed. You begin to take one step. You take that one step, and you know what? It's like that little child that you raise, that you see do something that maybe he don't even understand or she don't even understand what she's doing, but God becomes so proud of you because in your mind you're going, I want to be like Jesus. I want to be a reflection of who Christ is. He says very plainly in Matthew, if you're going to be a true reflection of Jesus Christ, you're going to have to understand and learn about and operate in the realm of mercy. We often believe that the only thing that is going to create 
or the only thing that is going to motivate is judgment but Paul said that the greatest motivation in his life was the love of Christ you know what this world needs to see in God's people not that we're right and they're wrong but they need to see that God loves them remember the bully in school remember that bully that was in school he was so big and burly and loud and, and, and obnoxious it's usually because he was hurting or hiding something many times this world becomes loud and obnoxious because they're hurting you say well they're, they're not hurting well they're hurting they may not know it but they're hurting because without Jesus Christ there is no hope without the Lord Jesus Christ they have no secured eternity and they're hurting church let me remind you blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy there'll come a time when we'll need mercy and on that day sir ma'am teenager you'll be glad you were merciful Lord we love you today thank you that you care for us God thank you that you love us